Welcome to the Seth Thibodeau Show, featuring the head coach of the Nickel State University baseball team, Seth Thibodeau. Today's program is presented by State Farm. Contact your local State Farm agent today and get to a better state. The Seth Thibodeau Show is also sponsored by Rouse's Supermarkets. Rouse's, you're either local or you're not. Good afternoon and welcome to the Seth Thibodeau Show presented by State Farm Insurance. I'm your host, Mike Wagon. and I'm here with the head coach of the Colonel baseball team, Seth Thibodeau. Welcome as always. Mike, thanks, buddy. You know, we talked last week, and the Colonels were heading into a critical series against McNeese State, and I wanted to look ahead to the entire series and take a look at the Southland Conference postseason picture. All you wanted to worry about, all you wanted to talk about, was Friday night and getting the jump on the Cowboys. You focused on that, and it turned out pretty well. Yeah, I felt like if we can take care of our business one game at a time, which is what the norm is around here, uh, then we'd be able to be really successful for a long period of time. And uh, if we start thinking too, too far ahead, we're going to catch ourselves a little bit, and we wanted to really focus on Friday night. Game one, Friday night, Ray E. Didier Field. Mike Sook takes the ball for the Colonels. He had struggled in back-to-back -back starts, and Nichols needed him to become the ace again. His counterpart, Cowboy right-hander Blake Ware, the senior, not a big strikeout pick pitcher, but he gets people out, and he goes deep into games. Bottom of the second, let's take you there. Base is loaded, two outs, and Ware gets Leo Vargas here, chasing the one-two breaking ball. Nichols leaves him loaded. Ware yielded five hits in the first two innings, but the Colonels stranded five runners in that time. Top third, Connor Lloyd draws a one-out walk for McNeese before Chase Marion clubs one to the wall in right center. Marion's eighth two-bagger of the season. Lloyd scores all the way from first base. The Cowboys up one to nothing. That's all they get off of Sook, though. So we go to the home half of the fourth. A hit and a walk to start the frame. Cody Dufran tries to move the runners up. He lays down the bunt here to third. Wasn't the easiest pitch to handle either. And Taylor Drake winds up throwing it away. Tyler Duplantis scores from second. The Colonels putting the pressure on the defense and making some things happen. The ball game tied at one. Meanwhile, Sook, he becomes nearly untouchable. He retired 14 of the final 16 batters that he faced. Facing Jackson Gooch here in the sixth, he catches a corner. Fan the side in order in that inning. He goes seven, allowing three hits with four walks and nine strikeouts. Top of the eighth, now Kelby Langston on the hill. Lloyd reached on an error, moved up on a sack. Then Michael Sullivan tags one to left. They give Lloyd the green light coming around third. The throw from Keith Cormier just a little offline. The Colonel's down two to one. But Cormier, after a game-tying home run in the eighth against UL Lafayette last Tuesday, does it again here. Lead off shot deep down the right field line. Tucked just inside the foul pole. And that would not the ball game up at two. Cormier was off to an outstanding weekend that would lead to several awards for him. Colonels bring in Jordan McCoy in the ninth. Gooch doubles, moves up on a bunt, and then the wild pitch uncourt. Nichols down for the third time. It's three to two McNeese. Ware is pulled after eight innings. He yields nine hits with a walk and five strikeouts. So McNeese goes to their closer, Lucas Quarry, the right-hander. This would be a night he would rather forget. Mike Barba leads off the inning here with the drag bunt, an all-out effort, and he would have himself a bunt hit. And that got the Nichols dugout jumping, and it may have turned the season around. Next batter, Matt Richard trying to advance him. Quarry goes to field it and falls on his keister. The Colonels have two on with nobody out. Richard winds up with three hits on the night. And then Leo Vargas is going to try to move the runners up. Quarry again, and he slips again. Nichols has him loaded with nobody out. Philip Lyons coming to the plate. And he drives the ball into center field. It would be deep enough. And Barba, speedy, coming off at third. He scores a tying run. Richard, this is big. He hustles to third and advances. And the Colonels tie this thing up. After a wild pitch and a walk, loads of bases. Cormier with a chance to win it. Fly ball, very shallow right. Matt Williams makes the catch. Nichols goes for it. Here comes Richard. 4-3, the final score. The Colonels take game one from the Cowboys. And, Coach, this was big in so many different ways. Absolutely. When we, we went down right there, you didn't see any panic. You saw some fight, and you saw a team that was determined to get a win. And it all started with Mike Barba playing, getting that single, that bunt 
uh, down, and it was just grit and determination. He sold himself out, got a play, and then you, we knew we were going to win the baseball game after that. That is a play that really defines what this Colonel team is That about. defines our program. That's what we do. It's who we are, and it's, it's grit and determination. And when we play that way, we're not going to get beat by anyone. And, and when we don't play that way, we're vulnerable. But we are starting to learn to play that way every single day, and it's very motivating. It's very exciting. And it's, it's fun to watch our players play like that. Well, you may have noticed, uh, fans watching the, uh, the, the highlights there, the Colonels were wearing blue helmets, not their normal red. And that was a, in honor of Prostate Cancer Awareness Night that took place here at the ballpark on Friday. Uh, the helmets were auctioned off to proceed prostate cancer awareness research. We saw the uh, team here going to uh, Terrebonne General Medical Center over the weekend as well, meeting with the staff there too. Something that I know you hold near and dear to your heart and something that the colonels are very involved with. Absolutely. I feel like I want our guys to be educated on everything possible. And, and, and uh, it's part of their experience here at Nichols is to always be able to be a part of things like this. And it's special, and our guys enjoy that. They wore the, the blue wristbands and the helmets, and it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun to meet a uh, cancer patient out on the field before the game. Uh, it's just a really neat experience for our players, and that's what it's all about. Well, we move along to game two on Saturday. The Colonels going for their first Southland Conference Series win of the year, and they throw their most consistent starter. You know what you're going to get from senior Corey DeLang week in and week out. Top of the second inning, DeLang inducing a ball here, a ground ball from Hans Osk. The defense turning two behind him. DeLang made all the right pitches when he needed to, and his defense backed him up. And so did the offense in this one. Bottom half of the second, bases loaded, one out. Mike Barba's grounded to third. McNeese gets the force out, but they can't double up Barba. Keith Cormier scores after leading off with a single. End of the third now. Starter Bryce Kingsley already gone. Michael Clemens here working to Cormier. The bases loaded single to right. Plates Leo Vargas, part of a three-run frame. Nichols up 4-0, and Cormier, he wasn't even close to being done. Let's head to the top of the fourth here. McNeese gets on the board. Osk back at bat, dumps DeLang's offering into right. The two-out hit scores Jackson Gooch, who led off with a double. The Pokes are down 4-1. But Nichols answers right back. Bottom of the fourth, Sam Peterson deals to Cormier. Keith on a tear. Vargas scores from second. Cormier goes three for five. Two runs batted in. He also scored a run and stole a base. Into the seventh, Cody Dufran coming up to bat here for Nichols, and he unloads on Peterson. The double into the left field corner chases in David Zorn, the 30th RBI of the year for Dufran. He reached base four times in this one. Nichols up six to one. DeLang going the distance. He gets Philip LeBlu here on the 3-2 fastball in the ninth. He surrendered two runs on nine hits with a walk and seven strikeouts as the Colonels clinch the series with a 9-2 victory. A Southland series win had eluded you all season. This, the Colonels left no doubt about. No, Corey DeLang was fantastic, and Cormier, of course, was lighting it up again at the plate. And We played really good baseball. We had a great crowd. We had a, you know, the day was beautiful, beautiful weather. It was just a great time. Our players were just starting to kind of feel it right there, and, and, and they wanted to be dominant. They wanted to be in complete control of the baseball game. We had some great at-bats, played great defense, and it was just the way we were supposed to play. Nichols now going for their first series sweep of the season, and the Colonels made a change in the rotation as Brandon Jackson starts in place of Taylor Bird. It's Jackson's first Southland start, and he would also double as a designated hitter. And Jackson answered the call in this one. He retires 10 of the first 11 Cowboys he faced. Connor Lloyd goes down looking in the first. Lloyd fought through a stomach virus, but Jackson had no room for sympathy. And Brandon got some help. Lloyd up again in the third. Mike Barber races over to make the shoestring catch in foul ground. Barber's seven-game hit streak came to an end, but he still contributed. Leo Vargas registering a sack fly in the first, and then in the third, the line drive to left, short hops into the glove of Jackson Gooch. Matt Richard scores his second run of the game. Vargas with a pair of RBIs, nickels up two to nothing. Later that inning, guess who? Keith Cormier coming up, and the base hit to right field, plating Phillip Lyons. Nichols garnered 11 hits off of the starting left-hander, Trey McGee. So we work our way into the fifth inning here. Lyons back at bat, and he would rope one to right. And again, Matt Richard got on, and yet again, Matt Richard trots home. Matt was three for four with a double. He scored three runs and also stole a base. Into the eighth inning now, Jacob Williams on the hill. Keith Cormier at bat. 
and Williams serves up the goal for ball. Cormier's third home run of the week. Three for four on the day, two batted in, six to nothing, Colonels. Jackson not only drove in a run, but he tosses a complete game, six hit shutout, two walks, five Ks. Hans Ost bounces out to end it. The Colonels sweep McNeese State as the Cowboys fall in 19 and 18 overall, six and nine in the Southland. Nichols improves to five and 10 in league play. Coach, you put Jackson in the rotation, you come out looking like the genius that you are. Jeez, yeah. yeah. I was a young man just, just doing what he does best, and it's throwing strikes and controlling the tempo of the baseball game. You saw that right away. It was boom, 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 boom. It was quick, and it was fast-paced, and, and uh, they never did anything to stop his, slow his timing down, and, and his momentum, he just kept going inning after inning. And uh, We knew we could get out of Brandon. We just we're, we're always kind of worried about taking him off the infield. Uh, but we needed, you know, we needed him on the mound that day, and, and, and he came through for us in a big way. You started the weekend four games behind a pack of teams. You needed to jump at least one of them to get into the Southland Tournament. Four games back with 15 to go. Now after the sweep, you're just one game behind yeah. the Cowboys with 12 to go, and th this is anybody's ball game. Yeah, absolutely, what a difference a week makes. And then, you know, who knows what's going to happen after this weekend. You can't just – you can't predict it this far out, and, and uh, we're excited about our next opportunity. So we're just going to take it one game at a time, continue to play good baseball, and, and stay hot and play good baseball at the right time of the year, which is very important. Well, we step out of Southland play here for a moment. The Colonels headed to New Orleans on Tuesday to face future Southland rival UNO. Lefty Taylor Bird got the midweek start, and he responded well. He was dominant in this one. Bird goes six shutout innings, yielding just three hits with nine strikeouts. He fans Zach Liberto here in the first inning, and the bullpen pits well behind him, too. And his teammates supported him. Mike Barbett tees off on UNO Southpaw Stephen Potter in the second. Home run number two on the year for Barba. The two-run shot is part of a four-run five-hit frame. And the offense wasn't done. They added three spot in the third. Zach LaBeouf getting a second consecutive start. The RBI doubled down the line. This one was decided early. The Colonels win 16 to five, sweeping the season series from the Privateers to improve to 22 and 20 overall. We've got about a 12-hour bus ride coming up to Tulsa on Thursday today and coach you just wanted to leave town with a good feeling absolutely we played some good baseball for a little bit last night and and I wanted to, we were tired we were fatigued and guys have been grinding out in the classroom and uh, for them to come out banging like they did and, and to see Taylor Bird have get a good start again for the first time in a few weeks was really good for us so for us to be able to have three four or five starters like that in a tournament setting man you got to be feel pretty good about where you're heading in, in the postseason so uh, but we'll just enjoy this road trip, and, and, and we'll be excited about it. It'll be a great atmosphere this weekend, and, hey, we'll take it one game at a time. We'll play Friday night and see how we do. That was big for Taylor, too, you know, getting pulled from the rotation. Yeah. You wonder how he's going to respond. He responded in the best possible way. That's all we think about for, for the last week or so was how is he going to respond? Is he going to tick him off and make him work a little bit, and, 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 or is it just going to, you know, it's going to knock him back a little bit mentally? It certainly didn't do that. He, he had a great week of practice. He had some really good bullpen sessions. He was really in tune with Coach Darrow watching film. I, I'm proud of him, and, and it's not over yet. He's still got a lot of season left, and we're going to need him to do that again. The Colonel's heading to Oral Roberts this weekend. We'll talk more about that a little bit later. We've got much more coming up on the Seth Thibodeau Show presented by State Farm Insurance. Stay with us. Does State Farm let me bundle auto, home, and life to save money? Sure. We practically invented bundling. And it all stays with State Farm. So my policies don't go to some bundling center. <laughs> that ships them off to some bundle factory. <laughs> I'm dealing with you and not some bungling, bustling bundle builders. Who have you been working with? Stay with the company you trust. Bundle and save with your local State Farm agent. At Rouse's, we love football. We love the players, we love the fans, and you know we love the food. So whether it's high school, college, or pros, if there's a game, we're tailgating. You can tackle your tailgate, too, with one stop by Rouse's. Get Rouse's ready to grill meat, chicken, and pork, or pick up Rouse's ready-to-serve tailgate specials. Everything is made fresh for the game, and you know it's all good. So get the home field advantage every time you shop. Shop local. Shop Rouse's. Now that's tailgating. Back with you on the Seth Thibodeau Show, presented by State Farm Insurance. Here to get us up to the minute on everything going on here at Nichols Off the Diamond is Pamela Johnson. 
One kernel program had a triumphant weekend in competition, while another was getting its feet wet in preparation for the upcoming season. All while Nichols Athletics stayed involved in the community. On Friday, the Nichols State University women's track and field team traveled to Hammond to compete in the Southeastern Line Invitational. The Colonels came away with one gold medal and 10 top 10 finishes. Jackie White earned the top spot in the 800 meter run with a time of 2 minutes and 13.5 seconds, while Southland Field Athlete of the Week, Jamie Springer, ended her streak of individual titles, earning silver in the javelin with a distance of 145 feet and 7 inches. The team returned to competition on Saturday in Baton Rouge at the LSU Alumni Gold Meet. This event was highlighted with current Olympians and some of the best track and field athletes in the country. Sitting second behind teammate Jackie White in the Southland Conference in the 1500 meter event for much of the season, Tessney Carruthers had the best race of her young career, finishing third overall with a new school record of 4 minutes and 29.92 seconds. Jamie Springer came back from the snap in Hammond and earned her fifth javelin title of the season, claiming gold with the distance of 152 feet and one inch. I came in second through the fifth round and the girl that was leading was from Texas A&M and she was leading with about 150 throw feet. So um, I came out fifth round, out through her, uh, through PR, 153 feet, an inch, I think and um, just came out with that. Neither of us improved on the sixth round, so I ended up first overall. It was really good for my confidence, um, definitely boosted it. As the football team heads into its final week of spring practice, they move forward taking notes from the mistakes made during Saturday's first scrimmage. Well, first of all, we had our eighth practice on Saturday, which was our scrimmage, and it was a great opportunity for the guys to get out there without coaches on the field and also play in front of some fans and supporters. So it was a good, a good test. The team's second scrimmage, set to conclude the spring, will be held on Saturday at John L. Gidry Stadium. Kickoff is scheduled for 11 a.m. The soccer program held its annual Six Aside Tournament over the weekend at the Nichols Soccer Complex. The event was open to the public and featured both recreational and competitive divisions. I think it ran uh, very smoothly. We had uh, quite a few teams. And this coupled with our uh, younger tournament we had last weekend, it was really good because we had a, a, a huge amount of uh, support from the community, which is always amazing for our program. I will say Coach Dillon and his staff do a great job of, of keeping it, like his, the past players in the loop of things. Uh, he always emails like me and the rest of my teammates um, in case we forget about the tournament. He sends us reminders and, asks, and uh, he even provided me the opportunity if I couldn't have found a team, he lined up another team that was looking for players that I could have played with. This term is a great way for us to get involved and, and keep playing a sport that we love. For the Seth Thibodeau Show, I'm Pamela Johnson. Thank you very much, Pamela. Well, we take a moment now to say goodbye to a colonel who personified everything good about this university and the human spirit. Cross-country runner Ross Maluli, a native of nearby Homa, valiantly batter, uh, battled cancer not once but twice following his sophomore season. This past December, we documented his struggle and his inspiring founding of the Ross Maluli Project, which included a 5K run to raise funds to support cancer patients and their families. An academic all-conference honoree and former student government senator, Ross left us on Sunday at the all too young age of 22. He won't be forgotten. Was something that everybody says is terrible it has helped me grow it's brought our family closer and i've met some wonderful people along the way Does State Farm let me bundle auto, home, and life to save money? Sure. We practically invented bundling. And it all stays with State Farm. So my policies don't go to some bundling center. <laughs> that ships them off to some bundle factory. I'm dealing with you and not some bungling, bustling bundle builders. Who have you been working with? Stay with the company you trust. Bundle and save with your local State Farm agent. 
At Rouse's, we love football. We love the players. We love the fans. And you know we love the food. So whether it's high school, college, or pros, if there's a game, we're tailgating. You can tackle your tailgate, too, with one stop by Rouse's. Get Rouse's ready to grill meat, chicken, and pork. Or pick up Rouse's ready to serve tailgate specials. Everything is made fresh for the game. And you know it's all good. So get the home field advantage every time you shop. Shop local. Shop Rouse's. Now that's tailgating. Back with you on the Seth Thibodeau Show presented by State Farm Insurance. Well, this year, there's one Colonel fan that stands out among the rest. But many unanswered questions surround this mysterious newcomer. Ashley Dufran helps us solve the mystery of Nichols' favorite unofficial mascot. Here at Nichols State University, we have a new fan that has decided to give our baseball program all his time and support. This creature from many miles away has become attached to the team and the fans, all because they share a similar passion. The Yeti appeared earlier in the season and caught players and fans off guard. This white beast emerged from behind the fence in the fifth inning, dashing across the field in support of the Colonels. But even with all the excitement, people still wondered where this monster came from and why was he at Nichols? Well, the Eddie's originally from Alaska. Uh, he played college baseball up there and was great from what we've heard. Um, obviously, we don't have any actual game footage of him, but um, everyone that we've talked to from his school, uh, and they're actually, um, he's done some interviews where they talked about he has a special pitch that he used to throw up there that was amazing. Um, he, he was dominant in Alaskan uh, baseball. And after graduation, he didn't really know what to do. Uh, he was kind of lost there for a while, which I know a lot of that happens to a lot of people after graduation. You don't really know what to do. Um, he ended up making his way down all the way to Louisiana uh, in search of a way to share his passion for baseball. Um, ended up at Nichols one day, uh, walked out on the field during the fifth inning, and the rest is history. With all his passion for the game, yet he still was on another mission when making his way down south. Yet he is looking for romance. While he might look cruel on the outside, deep down, Yeti is a hopeless romantic. The Yeti is actually really a romantic guy from what we've uh, been told. Uh, he's in search of a female Yeti that he can marry. He wants to find a wife down here, which uh, the selection of Yetis in Louisiana is a little more bare than it was in Alaska, although they're easier to find uh, without the snow. While the Yeti is still in search for a mate, he spends most of his time around his true passion, rarely missing a home game while lingering around the team's facilities on off days. But when the club hits the road, there simply isn't enough room on the bus. Poor Yeti gets left behind and wonders Thibodeau seemingly lost. Yeti gets really depressed when the team's away. Um, I know, you know, he, he sleeps in Coach Tibbs' office all the time. I guess that's where he lives now, but uh, when the team goes away, they don't really have enough room to take him. Um, you know, we, we've seen him out here on the field from time to time, uh, just walking around, throwing a baseball to himself. It, it gets really sad. And it's, it's really hard for Coach Tibb because he, he wants to take him, and it, uh, but he just can't. And, um, I mean, the Yeti, he just really doesn't know how to handle it. Yeti has formed a bond with the team, and with him being a former pitcher, he has grown close to Colonel Hurlers, Mike Sook, and Corey DeLang, with whom he's developed a comfort level. I would have to say that Yeti's favorite player out here is, uh, just from what we could tell, is Michael Sook. Um, Corey DeLang is his, his second favorite. Uh, they've kind of taken him under their wing since they're all, you know, kind of big creatures, and and they, uh, they, they like to eat a lot, all three of them. They'll put a restaurant out of business, but uh, they've, uh, they've taken the Yeti into their little brotherhood of, uh, they call them the Bash Brothers now from what I've heard. While we know Yeti loves Nichols baseball, it's still unclear how long he will stick around. Nichols hopes he will be near for some football and basketball while waiting on next year's baseball season. You know, we've tried to pin Yeti down on a timetable, how long he's gonna stick around. Um, you know, is he going to help out with football? Is he going to go over and join basketball sometimes? Um, you know, and it's hard. Obviously, his passion is baseball, but he's a pretty athletic guy and uh, loves all sports. So, you know, we're kind of hoping that after baseball season, he'll want to stick around. The only way we can make Yeti a permanent fixture around Nichols is to let him know we enjoy his company and being involved in activities with him. Showing him support when the team is gone the next two weeks will only improve our chances of Yeti hanging around.
one thing about the Yeti that, that he would never say, but I'll say it for him, um, it is hard when the team leaves and, uh, you know, there's, there's, the team is gone, you know, half the time, half the games are away games, so when they're gone, he's a lonely guy and uh, he really appreciates the interaction on his Facebook and Twitter um, because he spends a lot of time there when the team's not here and, and it really helps him to kind of get rid of that loneliness when he's got other people talking to him on Facebook and Twitter and kind of keeping him keeping him content so he would never say it but go like his Facebook go talk to him on Twitter keep him company because when the team's gone he's really depressed and I know he would appreciate it. Colonel baseball players and fans have come to love the creature we all call the fifth inning Yeti. While looking for love he also shares his adoration for the game with everyone and supports his team 100 percent. For the Seth Thibodeau Show, I'm Ashley Dufresne. Thank you very much, Ashley. It's time to announce our Rouse's Student Athlete of the Week Award, sponsored by Rouse's Supermarkets. You're either local or you're not. Rouse's Supermarkets are local with their roots established in Thibodeau in 1923. Trust Rouse's for great food and great values. Louisiana's best can be found at your local Rouse's or at Rouse's.com. This week, no doubts. The honors go to junior left fielder Keith Cormier, who was also named the Southland Conference and Louisiana Sports Writers Association Hitter of the Week. Over the last five games, Keith has gone 10 for 19 with three homers, a double, 11 RBIs, five runs, and a pair of stolen bases. Congratulations to Keith Cormier. Coach, uh, he's just on fire right now yeah. in a completely different zone. He really is, but you know what? There's more to it than just catching fire for a week. He works really hard at it. He's, in the, he's always in the cages. He's always watching film with Coach Prothrow. And uh, he's just a fantastic teammate and a wonderful human being. Something, a real joy to be around. We, we, he's fun to coach, but he deserves it. He's earned it, and, and he's not stopping. It's not going to stop now. He's been there for us all year long, and he'll be with us, you know, for the entire time. You know, we depart for Oral Roberts today, a three-game set against ORU in Tulsa. Beginning tomorrow, I'm going to smuggle the Yeti onto the bus. There you go. Uh, what about the matchup with the Golden Eagles? Well, you know, we're, we're traveling up north 12 hours, so that's always going to be a question mark. But they're a tough club. They've played a heck of a schedule, and they're as good. As, they're just like anybody else in our league. And we need to pitch it, play defense, play the game fast and at a high level. And we'll have a chance to be really successful if we do. And I know we will, and, and, and we're looking forward to going to going on the road, a nice road trip, and playing dominant Colonel baseball, and playing the best way we can. Oral Roberts, a perennial powerhouse in the Summit League, then they entered the South in this season, and they're sitting at eight, uh, about eight and seven in conference yeah. right now, 13-24 overall. Right. Not having it, they're not dominating this right. league like they did the Summit. I think they're finding this is an extraordinarily. It's competitive a tough league. league. You got to show up every day, and you got to grind every week, and and so. Um, but they are a good club, and they have some very good baseball players there, and they've got a chance to, to make a run as well. So uh, we need to play our best baseball this weekend. Looking forward to it, Coach. Thanks so Thanks, much, Mike. as always. Thank you. The head coach of the Colonels, Seth Thibodeau. That's going to do it for this week's program. We will talk to you again next Thursday at 3 o'clock here on the Seth Thibodeau Show, presented by State Farm Insurance. Today's show has been presented by State Farm. Contact your local State Farm agent today and get to a better state. This show has also been sponsored by Rouse's Supermarkets. Rouse's, you're either local or you're not. This has been a presentation of the Colonel Sports Network.